In this video, we will look at what state symbols are and how to use them. We have learned so far that matter exists in three different states, solids, liquids and gases. Many chemical reactions also involve reactants dissolved in water. State symbols would indicate whether the reactants and products in a chemical reaction are solids, liquids, gases, or dissolved in water. There are four state symbols that we can use. Solids, shown by S in the brackets. Liquids, shown by L. Gas, shown by G and aqueous to represent any substance dissolved in water and we'll use aq as the notation. So these are the four state symbols that we use. Let us look at the elements in the periodic table first. Most elements exist in the solid state at room temperature, as you can see shown in black. The only metal which is a liquid at room temperature is mercury, and the only non-metal which is a liquid at room temperature is bromine and these two elements are shown in blue. You can see that the remaining elements including the noble gases are gases at room temperature. Here are some examples of different solids. Some of them are elements and some of them are compounds. And you can see that I've used an S in brackets to represent that all of them are in the solid state. Sometimes it is useful to pay attention to the descriptors used in these phrases to determine whether something is in the solid, liquid or gaseous state. Looking at these examples, when you see the word crystals, a strip of, powdered, a lump of, granules, copper wire, these are indicators or descriptors that tells us that this substance is in the solid state. Here are some examples of different liquids. Again, water and hexane are examples of compounds in the liquid state and mercury is an example of an element in the liquid state. Here are some examples of gases chlorine gas, oxygen gas, and steam, which is essentially water in the gaseous state. Finally, an aqueous solution is one in which water is the solvent. An aqueous solution is formed when an element or compound dissolves in water. Here are some examples. All acids and alkalis are aqueous solutions because they have to be dissolved in water to show their acidic properties. When you dissolve solid copper 2 sulfate in water, you get copper 2 sulfate solution. And the last example is iodine, which is also a solid at room temperature, but it can be dissolved slightly in water to give iodine solution. So when you see the word solution or aqueous, in the descriptors, it tells us that this is indeed an aqueous solution where water is a solvent. We will now use some examples to illustrate when we can use each state symbol. Let's begin with sodium chloride. Here we watch sodium chloride being dissolved in water. So I have sodium chloride in the solid state and to it I add water which is in the liquid state and sodium chloride being a soluble salt it will dissolve in water to give us a colorless solution. So the resulting product is aqueous sodium chloride. So we can see the distinctions, although all three of them are represented as NaCl, the one with a bracket S is sodium chloride in the solid state, 
and the one with bracket L is sodium chloride in the liquid state and this is only formed if you heat sodium chloride to a very high temperature until it melts. But in the video you just saw, what you see is sodium chloride in the aqueous state in which it is dissolved in water. So do not be confused, although both are actually liquids, the state symbol L is only reserved when it is a pure substance that is in the liquid state. AQ is used when that substance is dissolved in water, so that is the difference. Here is another example. When electricity is passed through water, hydrogen gas and oxygen gas are formed. So water is a compound in the liquid state, it is pure, and the resulting two products are gases. So this is what it will look like if we add state symbols to the chemical equation. Here is another example. I have a strip of magnesium ribbon and to it I add hydrochloric acid. We see that the magnesium ribbon starts to react with the hydrochloric acid and we observe effervescence. So we know that a gas is produced in this reaction. So if we were to add state symbols in the reaction, we start off with magnesium in the solid state. Hydrochloric acid is not a pure substance but it's a mixture because an acid needs to be dissolved in water in order to show its acidic properties. So it's given AQ. We know that effervescence is observed, so the product being hydrogen is a gas, so we use G. And the salt form is magnesium chloride. Magnesium chloride is dissolved in water, so we give it the state symbols AQ. Let's look at one more example. On the left, we have a solution of lead 2 nitrate. On the right, a solution of potassium iodide. And when both solutions are mixed, we see that a solid is formed. In this case, the yellow solid is lead to iodide. Even though both reactants are aqueous solutions, the product is unable to dissolve in water because lead to iodide is not very soluble in water. So this is how we will write the state symbols. The two reactants, lead to nitrate and potassium iodide, are both dissolved in water. The product, lead to iodide, is insoluble in water. Therefore, we give it the state symbols of S. How do we know whether to assign potassium nitrate a state symbol of S, L, or AQ? Many chemical reactions, like this one, involve the formation of salts. Therefore, it's useful to know which are the salts that are soluble in water. As long as one of the reactants is an aqueous solution, the resulting salt formed in a reaction will dissolve in water if it is soluble. If it is insoluble, the salt form will be termed as a precipitate. So in this case, we have two aqueous solutions as the starting material. The first salt form, lead to iodide, is insoluble in water, therefore we use S. The second salt form, potassium nitrate, is soluble in water, therefore we use AQ. How do we know whether different salts are soluble in water or not? You will have to learn the solubility table to decide which compounds are soluble so that you can assign the state symbols correctly. Use the solubility table to practice assigning state symbols in the worksheet given in class. Thanks for watching.